I'd like to begin my little story with a phrase out of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30, where a man of God is speaking to Eli, and on behalf of God he says, Those who honor me, I will honor. I remember quite some years ago watching a series on organized crime in Canada. It began on the East Coast and worked its way across. And when it came to Vancouver, it explained that there were five ex-sergeants from the Hong Kong Police Department who were known as the Five Dragons or the Five Great Sergeants. And they basically ran organized crime in Vancouver. How did that ever happen? Well, the Hong Kong Police Department was the most corrupt police department in the world, according to this series. From 1963 to 1973, it's estimated that they took in 10 billion Hong Kong dollars in graft and corruption. It's very common in the non-Christian part of the world to have to pay some sort of bribe or bakshish for just about every transaction. In Hong Kong, it's referred to as tea money. And if you wanted to get a passport or get a speeding ticket fixed or whatever it might be, every transaction would have some money folded in to bribe the official who was doing it. And these five sergeants in the Hong Kong police force basically ran organized crime in the city. It came to light when the uh, superintendent, the chief superintendent of the police force, who actually was an Englishman, he took an early retirement. And in spite of a fairly modest salary, uh, they discovered that he'd been able to sock away over $4 million. And so there became a commission. Uh, the British government started what was called the Independent Commission Against Corruption. They discovered that this was so systemic, almost everyone on the police force was on the take. But I recall they interviewed an Australian police officer who had worked for quite some years during this time on the Hong Kong force. And they asked him the question, during his years there as a police officer, did he know of anyone that was not on the take in the police department? And he thought for a moment, and then he said, well, yes, there were two. Uh, the one fellow, he was completely out of his mind. He was mad, and uh, everyone left him alone. The other fellow, he said, was a Plymouth Brethren. I'll never forget thinking to myself, now here's a believer over in Hong Kong, surrounded by all of this cesspool of corruption, faithfully serving the Lord, living on rice and beans when everyone else is living it up. And unknown to the world, and yet this scripture comes true, those who honor me, I will honor. I recall the words of Anne of Austria when she was brought before that wicked persecutor of Christians, Cardinal Richelieu. And he said to her, look at you, Anne, wan and thin. You've lost your throne. You've lost your power living in prison under house arrest. And look at me. I'm living with all the best of everything. Is it really worth it for your unwillingness to deny Christ? And she said to him some of the bravest words I think I've ever heard. My Lord Cardinal, she said, God does not always pay at the end of the week, but at the end he pays. And so these words from 1 Samuel chapter 2 continue those who honor me I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Really doesn't matter what the world thinks of us. The only estimate, the only evaluation that matters is what does God think of us. And so I take my hat off to every hidden, quiet, unassuming, honest, hardworking Christian in every place around the world that may be bypassed for advancement, that may be snubbed, that may be looked down upon, but who faithfully live to honor the Lord and in the end 
Those who honor me, says the Lord, I will honor. Never forget, in the days of the New Testament, Paul was in prison and Nero was on the throne. But as someone has said, today we call our sons Paul and our dogs Nero.